Hello everybody, this is uh, Thomas Terry welcoming you to another study in the Word. Glad you could be with me today. Today we're going to start our third uh, session on uh, verse by verse through Romans. A very intriguing and great book. I think that as we go through these uh, epistles, and we will in great detail, okay, uh, as you, you'll see, I'll, I'll take rabbit trails and stuff because uh, it's necessary to really understand what's being said here. We'll go into it in great detail. I think a lot of this verse-by-verse -verse expository type of preaching and teaching shall come back in popularity into the body of Christ because people uh, really want some meaty things, meat, meat of the word. Let me uh, read again, starting in, in Romans chapter 1, and we're going to read down through three verses here. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name's sake, among whom uh, are ye also called the call of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Now, that's where we got to. We got to verse 9. So I want to break verse 9 down and talk about it. It's an important verse. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. Interesting. Paul said he, he serves God with his spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You possess a soul which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your thought processes, and you live in a body or your earth suit here. And Paul said, I serve God with my spirit because the Bible says we must learn to live by the spirit, walk in the spirit, move in the spirit. We are to be, uh, we are to, uh, be filled with the spirit. Everything we do, worship God in spirit and in truth, is really a spiritual worship. So it's not something we do with our emotions just or our physical body. It's a spiritual thing. And he says in the gospel of the Son, he serves with the Spirit, that without ceasing, without ceasing, I make mention of you in my prayers. This is important. Without ceasing, he says, I make mention of you in my prayers. Interesting. The word prayers here is an interesting Greek word because the word prayers here is a word that really means prayers of God. Prayers of God. In the Spirit, Paul was talking about the prayers of God. What does he mean, the prayers of God? Well, if a prayer is in the Spirit, you're really praying, if I could use this term, by the unction or the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you're praying a prayer that is initiated by God. This is something people don't understand. How important is it to pray prayers initiated by God, initiated by His Word, initiated by His Spirit, in line with his word, in line with his spirit. If we skip over this, we will miss a great truth uh, which we have and need to understand. Let's look at verse 9 again and break down and glean some things from this. For God is my witness. The word witness here is martyr. It's where we get the word martyr. One who has information and knowledge of something, and hence uh, one who can give information, bringing light to confirm something. That's what this word means. And uh, if you turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says this, God leads, it says, them that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Now listen, God leads and guides us through his Spirit. Proverbs 20, verse 27 said that God enlightens us through his Spirit. Our spirits are the light bulbs, so to speak, of the Lord, searching the inward parts of us. All right, so God leads and guides us through our, our human spirit, where the Holy Spirit is dwelling. He pours information into our spirit so we can pray out mysteries or divine inspired utterances. If you look here at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we'll see this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he's talking about other tongues, right? Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. 
So we can see several things here. When they're praying in other tongues, and this is what he's talking about when he says, I'm serving God with my spirit in prayer, praying in other tongues <coughs> is praying in the spirit, it says, and when we do that, we're speaking mysteries. Now, what are these mysteries? Well, these mysteries are divine inspired secrets of God that are there for us to be unveiled unto us or revelated unto us or illuminated unto us. You can use that term no matter what group you're from. I know some groups have a hard time with revelation. Some groups say inspiration, whatever. But you see, the truth of the matter is it is the spirit of God in our spirit that enlightens us, that guides us, that leads us. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 there, it says, them that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The word there, sons, it means full-grown sons. So full-grown sons should be led by the Spirit of God more and more. All sons of God can be led by the Spirit of God a little bit. It's like a child growing up. As you grow, you can take more um, understanding from what's being said around you, your parents and so on. And so your parents can give you things to do and you'll do them. You're being led by your parents' words. But you have to grow up. You're certainly not going to tell a little child that's just a toddler, go take out the garbage. They're not capable of understanding that, nor are they capable of really doing that. You're not going to tell them to drive a car. That comes with times and maturity. It's the same way in being led by the Spirit. It's a growth in that. And so we see that praying in the Spirit is praying in other tongues. And we're speaking divine mysteries out. Now, go to Romans chapter 8 here. Go back to Romans chapter 8. Let's look at this. A very, very important scripture to understand and very much misquoted, misunderstood, and it'll screw you all up. Quite frankly, if you start believing some of the things that people tell you, you just get all goofed up. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says this, Likewise, the Spirit or the Holy Spirit also help us our infirmities. Now, the word helpeth in the original Greek means to, um, let's see, take hold together with you against. All right? So the Holy Spirit takes hold together with us against our infirmities. The word infirmities is an old English word that can mean weaknesses, even sicknesses. Okay? Depending on the context of the scripture, I really believe here he's talking about prayer weaknesses more than anything else. Likewise, the Holy Spirit also takes hold together with us against our infirmities or our weaknesses. You know, if you go by yourself and try to pick up a piano, you're going to be too weak to do it. But if you have other people, as an example, come and help you, maybe four or five others, you can do it. Well, the Holy Spirit, the mighty Holy Spirit, is sent to help our infirmities. Why? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. Interesting, isn't it? But the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit, himself, not itself, because the Holy Spirit is not a it, it's a human being, it's a, 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 excuse me, a divine person. The Holy Spirit is, the, is God, the third uh, person of the Trinity. He's God. The Holy Spirit of God makes intercession for us which groanings which cannot be uttered. In the Greek, it's very clear, Greek scholars tell us, groanings which cannot be uttered in our known speech. Signs, groanings, other tongues, okay? Groanings which cannot be uttered, deep sigh, deep groanings, deep words that we don't, we don't give with our own mind, comes from our spirit, cannot be uttered in our articulate speech, but it, so it has to be other tongues. Verse 27, and he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he, the person that's, uh, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according, it says to the will of God, but that's really not in the original. It says the saints according to God. So this is God praying through us. This is what Paul is talking about there in Romans, the first chapter. God praying through us. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good of them that love God to them that are called according to his purposes. Now, how many have ever heard that scripture taken out of context and, and heard people say this? You know, everything that's happening to you is working together for your good. Everything that happens in life to you is working together for your good. All things. We know that all things are working together for your good. That's a lie. 
Not everything that happens to us is working together for our good. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Those things that he's doing are not good things. You know, that they'll take this scripture and they'll say, see, sickness and disease even is good for you. If it comes into your life, you know, God's trying to teach you something. You believe that, you're pretty much hammered right there. You're dead right there. I mean, you're, you're pretty much, you're never going to get over sickness and disease. It's not God's will for you to be sick. That's not what he's saying here. Is it the will of God for you to go out and sin? Somehow, does that work together for your good? Of course not. Now, I understand that over the period of time and through history and into eternity, God is working everything after his own counsel. But in our particular lives, not everything that happens to us is working for good. He's not talking about that. In context here, he's saying all the things that we're praying for and everything that's making intercession according to notice in, 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 in context. Let's read it again. Verse 26, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know what, not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered in our known speech. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to God. Or in other words, God is in control of the prayer. And we know that all those things will work together for the good of God, because God's in control. God's praying them through. We're in line with God. You see, when you pray and allow God to pray through you, everything's going to work in that prayer for your good. That's what he's saying. And you need to understand that, because there's a lot of uh, deception in that other thing when you believe it the other way. A lot of deception comes into the body of Christ because of that. The word that maketh intercession here is a word that carries a meaning to meet with God, to discuss and talk about or make intercession, stand in the gap uh, for or against something. Amen. Just like Abraham did. Remember, Abraham went to God and God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, hey, Lord, you know, if you could find a certain amount of people, would you do it? The Lord would say no, and he kept on dropping the number. That's really intercession. We don't talk about that enough. But sometimes we must pray against principalities and powers. We must get them off of people. We pray for people, but we pray against evil, against them, so those, those evil powers are broken over their minds and they can come to Christ or be healed or delivered or whatever it is that you're praying about. This is a little different Greek than is used in verse 26 where it says the Spirit makes the intercession, pleads on our behalf for us to help us in our infirmities. Weaknesses or sicknesses could be. Get to, it is, it's talking about getting this intercession will get to the root cause that's causing physical problems. You know, many physical problems are not caused because you have a disease. Many physical problems are caused because there's a presence of a demonic spirit. Many physical problems are caused because a person has not listened to God, and doesn't eat right, okay? Maybe they don't listen to God about their diet. They don't listen to God about nutrition. They don't listen to God about things. They get out of shape. They let the, their bodies go. They break those things that God says they should be doing, and that causes physical problems. So when you're praying in the Spirit, God will reveal these things to you. No, if you want to be healed, you must lose weight. No, if you want to be healed, you need to add this or take this away from your diet. Those are things that are very important that people don't discuss enough. The spiritual problem that's causing the physical problem. The mental problem that's causing the physical problem can be revealed at, in a person as we intercede for ourselves or for the rest of the saints in the body of Christ. This is why praying in the Spirit is so important. The emotional problems that people have that's causing the physical problems. The mental thinking, the way they think, all right? The way they've been raised. The way they, they respond to certain things, the hurts, the wounds, the root attitude, the root cause of a weakness that causes sin, etc., can all be dealt with as we pray and allow God to pray through us the perfect will of God. There is no more powerful prayer than that because when you pray the perfect will of God, it's going to get answered, see? We, and, and so we take hold together. He takes hold. The mighty Holy Ghost takes hold together with us against whatever it is that we're interceding for. What God is saying is the Holy Spirit will help us. He's a partner with us. Isn't that good news? Against our weaknesses, whatever they may be. For by ourselves, without the power, the illuminating benefits of the Holy Ghost, we don't know what we should pray for, 
how to get to the root cause of the problem or the weakness. Example, heaving. Bitterness may be blocking it. Unforgiveness may be blocking it. Attitudes may be blocking it. Sin may be blocking it. But God will help us offer our prayer through the power of the Holy Spirit with groanings. And this word groanings means signs as of the oppressed. Prayers that we don't understand in, in our own speech, clearly other tongues. It means to groan, but still, God understands what we're expressing when we do that. Groan together with God, picking up on what God is feeling and saying. Taking on the feelings of someone who's in trouble with God, or to praise and worship God. Let me tell you a story about this kind of thing. I was one time, early in my Christian life, wasn't in full-time ministry yet or any of that. I was just serving God the best, learning about him like some of you are. And uh, But me and my wife began to pray all the time together at that time in our lives. We were young. We lived down in Los Angeles area. And uh, uh, this particular uh, day or evening, I'll never forget, we had the windows closed. It was hot. And in Los Angeles area, it gets really hot in the summer. And it was a hot day, so we had the windows closed. We had blinds on the windows, if you can picture that. And we had another friend that I had just led to the Lord um, with us praying. And so before we started our prayer, we we're going to hold hands, and you know, three of us, and pray over some things. Before that happened, I got a phone call. And in this phone call, I got a call from a, my, my, um, who was my best friend uh, in the world when, before I was a Christian. And I'm still good friends with him today. Literally... I could tell immediately something was very, very wrong. I knew this man very well. I knew something was seriously wrong because his tone, he was always so jolly and happy and everything that this just was not him. And I knew something was wrong. And he said, Tom, will you please pray? He says, my father, they've taken him into the hospital. They found a blood clot in his legs, in the, I guess in the veins in his legs. And they say that he has a 50-50 chance of living and they're going to have to amputate his leg to save his life. Would you pray? Now, this book, man, at the time, he is today, but was at the time not a believer. I told him, I said, I surely will pray for him. Now, this man, you have to understand something. I knew this family very well. In fact, this man that we're talking about was almost like a second father to me. I was over there all the time for years. I lived with him at times. Uh, so I was very close to this family, and I think sometimes that can even help us in, in being, yielding to prayer. This really overwhelmed me. I mean, that's not good news. 50-50 uh, chance of living. He's going to lose his leg. He was still a relatively young man at that particular time. This was really upsetting. And immediately we, uh, we began to pray with it and agree as best we could. But all of a sudden something happened that I'll never forget. There was a wind that blew, literally a wind that blew in, in my in the room there. All three of us, the 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 blinds blew whoosh, like that. Power of God hit us, knocked us all on the ground. We were on the rug. We were uh, there was a rug in the house, and we were sucking rug, and we began to pray. It was not a normal prayer. I mean, we began to intercede and pray like. Our lives depended on it. The only way I can describe this was that I felt for the family. And I felt what they were going through. I felt the emotions they were going through, the hurt they were going through, the fear they were going through, the shock of this. I felt how the mother felt. I felt how the brothers felt. I felt how my friend felt. I felt like the how the, the man that was got this news and was sitting in the hospital felt. And then I knew I was feeling what God felt. And the love, it's hard to describe this, the deep love that I was feeling and experiencing for that family and for that man from God, uh, my life was never the same after that experience. It was so deep that I was crying out. I felt like I was going to die, literally. And we all three that were like, we were praying and we were we were interceding so fast. And 
the groanings that came out of us and the sighings that came out of us and the pleadings that came out of us. I wish we would have recorded that because it was just not norm. It was supernaturally God taking hold together with us against this thing that was happening to this loving great family that were not yet believers. See, God loves everybody. Well, we prayed for that. How long? I don't know. The only thing I can tell you is one of the most intense experiences I've ever had in God. But all of a sudden, all three of us felt a release. It was like we were released from this, and we began to worship and praise God, and I knew immediately we had the answer. I just knew it. There was a witness in my spirit. We had the answer. I began to rejoice. Well, the end part of this is what happened to the man is they, they had taken him in. They had found this blood clot in his leg, but they were going to will him into surgery. They're going to amputate his leg, but before they did that, the doctor all of a sudden that was in charge of this stopped and said, you know what, for some reason, I just really feel we need to take one more x-ray on this. <laughs> he just, that he, he stopped right, they were willing him in. He stopped him, he said, take him back, I want to get one more x-ray on this real quick. So they took him in, they x-rayed, and the blood clot was gone, completely gone. The man didn't get his leg amputated. The man lived, and the doctors could not explain what happened. Well, hallelujah. We know what happened. We know because we know that the Holy Ghost took hold together with us against what was attacking this man. Oh, how many more miracles could we see in the body of Christ if we could get Christians to yield to the Spirit of God and begin to pray many, many times, long times, in the spirit. And I say this, I don't tell people how long to pray, but I got to tell you this. Most people just don't pray long enough for things like that to happen. You know, you got to get into the spirit for a while before you get over there into this intercession. A lot of times I know when I'm interceding because my tongue changes. I know when I'm interceding because there's a sign. I know when I'm really interceding because there is a groaning. There's a deep burden. Another time I remember my wife and I experiencing this as we were pastoring our first church in Reno, Nevada. And I'll tell you something, the Holy Ghost began to, it was almost like on the inside of us, we knew something terribly wrong was going to happen. I mean, I knew it as well as I was, you know, I knew I was who I was as a person. It was not good. And I knew something wasn't right. And this didn't go on for just a little bit or a couple hours. This went on for days. And we just kind of separated ourselves off and began to pray about this, both of us, because we knew something seriously was wrong. And we also knew it was probably somebody fairly close to us. Now, God didn't show me exactly who it was we were praying for at that particular time. But <clears throat> we knew we were praying about something, and we were praying to divert a tragedy or a death, pretty much. Well, we had a man that was in our congregation at that particular time that flew for Federal Express. He was a captain. And if you know anything about Federal Express planes, they normally are pretty large planes, but they might have a crew of about six people sometimes or whatever on board with them. But they're big planes, many of them, and they carry a lot of uh, cargo and stuff. Well, this particular man that was in our congregation was really kind of what I call a moderate Christian. He, I think he was, he knew the Lord, but he just wasn't really serving God fully. And he was kind of lukewarm, you know, one of those. But his his wife was a, a strong Christian and they came to our church and we loved him. But this man was flying into Washington, D.C. And I remember this. And uh, when he came in for a landing, something happened to the plane or something happened mechanically or whatever, where he hit too hard. The plane literally flipped over and it, it, you know, flipped over and started to slide down the, the um, landing area where the, what do you call it? The landing uh, path, whatever it is. And as, as he went like that, it exploded. Some of the fuel exploded into a, into a, a fire, fiery uh, deal. Well, this man and all six of those people in the plane got out without any injuries. 
it was a miracle. I mean, and this was on the news. This was, this was just, it was all over the place for a couple of days. This was way back in the early 90s, I believe. This was a, uh, they were saying this was almost impossible to happen. Well, let me tell you something. If we, as the pastors of that particular congregation, had not yielded to the Spirit of God on that deal, or God would be searching to find somebody else to pray that thing through, we would have had a funeral. And I just wonder how many funerals, how much sickness and disease, how many terrible things that happen to people could be avoided if people simply got in there and prayed things through. The answer to that is many, many, many. How many people could be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, if the people of God would simply begin to pray? And you know, there's nowhere in the Word of God in the New Testament that I find where somebody has some special prayer life or prayer gift. It's not a ministry. You pray, all of us are called to pray. Now, some people pray more than others. Some people are kind of uh, spiritually oriented. They like praying more. But all God's people are called to pray. And we need to say that. We need to make that very clear because everybody needs to take their place in prayer. Some people will be able to pray more and longer hours than others, different seasons of life. I understand that. But we need people to pray in the Spirit because we're taking hold together with Him against many infirmities, weaknesses, sin, sickness, disease, poverty, fear, anything the enemy has. We're taking hold together and we're praying these things through. Well, I've run out of time. I want to thank you for joining me. Well, that's a lot in one verse, <laughs> but that's the way it is with me. I like to go on these rabbit trails and talk about things. Listen, uh, you can go to our, our website, faithalivefellowship.org. That is a, really a, a being under construction, but it's you can still work it right now. At faithalivefellowship.org, you can go to a place there that says media or it says seminars, and you push the button and goes over. There's media seminars. There's all kinds of teachings. Then you can go to other buttons, and you can go from our website to our uh, YouTube pages, Facebook Live pages, so on, uh, Twitter pages. All of the media ministries are free, and it's for your spiritual education and uh, spiritual edification. And if you like this teaching, I, I, I would like you to go over there. That's faithalifefellowship.org. And if you like these teachings, share it with somebody. When you go to faithalifefellowship.org, uh, pray about becoming a, a, a partner with us. I, I, I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to people to partner with us any amount, one, an offering a year, uh, an offering every month. Most people do give offerings every month. And uh, we would really appreciate that because we're expanding the ministry and doing things for God. So if, it, if we're a blessing to you, please uh, consider that. That's faithalifefellowship.org. You can send us our uh, your prayer requests, and we really love you guys. We're praying for you. Till next time, this is uh, Thomas Terry. God bless you. Remember this: feed your faith, starve your doubts to death.